Hello and welcome to another biology video. This is Preetinder Kaur for Perfect Scores. And in this topic, we are going to cover GMO, that is genetically modified organisms. So we are going to cover some examples in this video and discuss the pros and cons of such experiments, the GMOs. So in case of crops, let's begin with crops. In case of crops, engineering is done to extend the shelf life of products. That is one use. To extend the shelf life of products. And a specific example of that is tomatoes, whose scientific name is Flavor Saver. And it has been engineered to have an extended shelf life. And how does that happen? Extended quality by switching off. So let me write it here. By switching off the gene that basically allows it to go bad. Or switching off the gene for ripening. So the tomatoes do not get ripened easily. They need more time to get ripened. And if they don't get ripened easily, that means they can be put on display or put on a shelf for a longer period of time. So this basically reduces or delays the natural process of the softening of the fruit. So that is what switching off the gene gives rise to. So that is one use to extend the shelf life of products. The second is to engineer crops to provide protection from pests. And we are going to do a specific example of that, which is going to be the maize crop, specifically BT corn, that means biotechnologically produced corn. Now this has been engineered to become toxic to the corn borer which is the name of a pest and how it has become toxic to this pest by using the gene the toxic gene from a bacteria known as bacillus thuringiensis that is what gives rise to the B and the T in the corn Bacillus thuringiensis, the bacteria whose plasmid uh, is used and whose gene is used and inserted into a maize plant, in fact a maize cell. So maize becomes toxic to the corn border. So these are two examples of crops. Let's also do two examples of animals. How genetically modified organisms are used and specifically in case of animals there's an example that comes to my mind which is to enhance production of anything it could be any substance production of milk or production of wool so one example that I'm going to quote here is sheep so sheep produce more wool when they are engineered with the gene for a particular enzyme and that enzyme is responsible for production of cysteine. So production of cysteine, which is the amino acid, a very important component of the keratin protein of wool. So what happens is wool is made up of a particular protein called keratin and one of its component amino acids is cysteine which is a really important part of keratin and so these sheep produce more wool because they have been trunk they have been given the gene for the enzyme that is responsible for a higher production of this amino acid so as a result they produce more wool another example in case of animals is engineering animals to produce desired products. An example of this is sheep that produces 
human alpha 1 antitrypsin so this is an example that is given in most of the textbooks also the human alpha 1 antitrypsin so this basically is a medicine and this is used to treat people who are suffering from hereditary emphysema so that is the disease that is treated by sheep's milk because that contains this particular product in it so these are two uses of uh, genetically modified organisms specifically animals but you need to discuss what are the benefits what are the drawbacks of using gmos so the benefits of using these GMOs are that first of all it helps to introduce a characteristic or introduce a new feature that was not part within that gene pool. That was not a part of the original gene pool. And since we are adding that new characteristic, it must be something positive that we are adding. That means something that the selective breeding could not have given. The second benefit is it results in increased productivity. Of uh, food production. So that means we need less land to give a comparable produce. The third important benefit is you need less use of chemicals, less use of chemical pesticides. And this obviously reduces the cost. And the fourth important use is now you can grow some of these crops in areas that were previously not viable. So previously unviable areas can now be used to grow new crops. So that reduces the need for deforestation. Since we have done the benefits, we also need to know what are the possible harmful effects. So the first harmful effect is that that particular crop or animal can have currently unknown harmful effects. Maybe harmful effects that show themselves in let's say 10 years after the consumption so that is never known the second harmful effect can be when there is accidental release of the transgenic organism and this can cause competition with the native variety so the actual variety of a particular plant or animal may well become extinct so competitive with the native varieties. The third potential harmful effect is possibility of cross-pollination with undesired organisms. That is in case of plants. Maybe that gene gets pollinated with a weed. So that weed will also become resistant. So we may have a hard time controlling the weed population. And the fourth is since it is all selective and done in a laboratory, there is no randomness. So it reduces the genetic variation or the genetic biodiversity. For example, corn borer may have played an important part in the ecosystem of an area. But because the maize plants were made toxic to the corn borer, maybe there will be an effect on the ecosystem of that area so it reduces the genetic biodiversity so that is all that you need to know for genetically modified organisms so just go over the processes once again and I'm sure it's going to be easy to understand so thank you so much for watching this video